All right, guys. Uh, um, I'll say hi. I haven't done the recap in a while, so I just want to say hi. And I'll uh, just show what we did today in the chat. It was pretty awesome. Um, I don't remember how I actually done the recap. It's been a really while. But um, the market has been very interesting, really amazing. Uh, thanks to electronic uh, vehicle EV mania of Tesla and NIO, which is essentially the Chinese um, Chinese uh, Tesla. I had NIO and Tesla on my chart plus Zoom, but I had a really good day on NIO and I'm really satisfied with what I did. So here's what I did on NIO. So a stock was gapping up and then the pre-market was just above the Viva and that's very very important for me really really important these levels for me that stays above if I want to go long I need them to stay above the Viva that's my trade book essentially that if the stock is above the Viva and is gapping up I wait in the first minute or two minute and then I'll take the uh, you know op you know opening range breakup but what happened was in the first minute so I was really ready for an opening range breakup on it so I was really, really getting ready for an opening range breakup on it if he had a really good candlestick and then go toward the 20. But what happened that the stock just sold and lost the VWAP and VWAP is in this blue line on my chart. And it's a very, very important line. You have, you must have it also for the uh, pre-market and post-market. It's very important. It's not only because that essentially shows the balance of power between buyers and sellers, even in the pre-market. So yeah, we'll just, uh, so I, I saw that drop and then we took it short for an opening range breakdown. Stock is shortable, no problem, getting filled, some tons of liquidity. I got actually not a great entry, so a much other entry would have been around 930, but I went short, I added more. We had a small level at 1950, but because we had the previous day close at 1903, I was really confident that we we're gonna get there. That's why I didn't cover much anything around 915, and as you drop, I just cobbled all the way up to 1875. And we had the really good confirmation on the level two as well. When there were big beads, the stock was really dropping down. So that was really nice. And after that, so you see on the five minute chart, so my decision to take that short was based on five, one minute chart. On a one minute chart, again, we had this moving average. So it was a little bit worrisome, this moving average, which is a 200 moving average. If I wanna remove all of these levels, so it would be a little bit nicer. So it was a little bit worrisome and I kind of knew that this stock having the fact that the stock is just trading at all time high like crazy and there is a big mania of NEO, it, it's unlikely that, oh, it's not unlikely, but it's just, it might actually just keep selling off. So that, that's why I really didn't bet on this one going any lower. So I'll just kept on that. And then suddenly what I saw that a stock is really bouncing back and just squeezed back and claimed all of these levels. You know, on a one minute chart, what I noticed was it just came back up. Look at this huge candlestick. This is a squeeze candlestick. So you don't want to stay short here after it's such a huge candlestick. You know, it came up. I, the last piece I got out here at the break even. So that's my short trade. And then, you know, it really claimed the VWAP. So look at this doji came up, claimed this blue line. And then I didn't like it to the long. I mentioned that, but I really didn't like to the long because it was just, uh, you know, there's so many resistance levels. Eh, I didn't like this, so many resistance levels. But eventually it squeezed above them, just killed everything and came up. And then, you know, after it passed through all of these levels and moving averages, I just took a small short, a small long on it, popped up, sold, and I got at the break even. So that was a small profit on it, but I was done with my day. I mean, I was really good with my day. I mean, very, very profitable. I really didn't need to mess around with it. It just came back up, you know, just did a consolidation. I really didn't like this entry because the risk to reward in that end, that, that trade wasn't great. The risk to reward really wasn't that great at that level. Let me just make it a little bit smaller. Yeah, I just didn't like that trade, but this, this consolidation was really nice. On a five minute chart, we really held this moving average. So now we're just really getting ready for another squeeze. It popped up, I went long again at 1960, but again, I had a good day and that's the problem. When you're having really a good day, you do not want to mess around with it. That's why I just got out of it. Uh, with a little bit of profit but after that you see the explosion all the way up to 20. if i were watching it a little bit earlier i could get a better entry near this pop on a five minute chart essentially um, you know i would have stayed in there but again I've, i'm done uh, over five thousand dollars so i really don't need to mess around with anything um on on a five minute chart although it sold up it came back up it really never did an engulfing engulfing isn't a strategy that we trade it really didn't do that but 
if that consolidation on a five minute on chart was really nice so essentially still this one is a five minute open range breakup you can't call this a five minute orb even though it, it's happening at minute number 955 even it's half an hour but it's still you can actually take that so you could have been a really nice entry 1940 and then after that you see that it's just exploding and going higher another thing that is really important and also brian mentioned that is uh, you know now this stock is going to stay very strong you know it just cracked this level which is the yesterday high and then dropped here but acted as a support and bounced back and very very uh, beautiful trade so that that was it pretty much for me yeah the only trades that i had was this new i did mess around with the options a little bit i tried to go take an option on apple but uh yeah i just i just mess around with the option a little bit but uh, i'll just close my position and i have this iwm that i want to see if it can get to 160. iwm is my long-term swing and um i want to see if, uh so my entry is at the run here now it's just uh, claiming the VWAP. I hope that we can get to 158. There's another level at 158. Uh, I essentially, I'm hoping to get to 158 this week. And then maybe later we can get to 159.84. Um, so what was, uh, uh, so that's uh, essentially what you're saying is, um, um, yeah, so that's the strategy and NIO, NIO. That was a really, really nice, uh, really, really nice uh, trading on there. Uh, Brian took a short Kodak. Brian really nailed it on Kodak. So, and Kodak was one of those interesting stocks because it really moved up in the pre-market, went up, and then just in the minute number two, lost it really, really bad. And uh, that's good to always wait for a minute. That's why I always love to wait. So as you see, the stock is just on the first minute popped up, but I wouldn't take this trade to the long side because this is way too extended from the VWAP, and that's another thing. I mean, do you want to take the trade to the 988 when the VWAP is at 9? It's just $1 move. That's a huge, huge thing. That doesn't fit into my trade book. You know, that's just $1 move. It's just that's why I don't want to take it for an opening range breakup. It's just way too extended. I want to get uh, an entry near the VWAP. Not exactly. I don't want to be religious on it, but uh, just... Uh, um, you know something near that's why this is not a good and as you see after that it really lost it and turned out to be a really nice engulfing and it, you could potentially take a short here again i didn't you could potentially take a short here at nine and you see we have tons of shares for short as well it's, the stock is shortable and then you can go down and slide at 7.92 brian took a couple of really nice short on it um i think brian saw this uh, took one for the crack of eight and i think he did another one for the break of eight so I think Brian took a couple of short on it, but I just, you know, I'm not really good at the stocks under $10 and I really don't want to mess around with it. Apple is squeezing higher, so that call option. Zoom was another trade that we called it um, for uh, the two minute chart. Yeah, Zoom was also another trade that, I, you know, again, same, very similar pattern to NIO. Sold up, but really hold this. Actually, it's really nice to hold these two together on a five minute chart. Very similar, see? very similar so sold off but bounced back through this 200 moving average and five minute chart and after that it just exploded the the thing is uh, between nio and zoom was zoom is trading at all-time high so there was really no level or resistance or anything up there uh, but uh, zoom, uh, neo had so much resistance up there but i call this trade as well so essentially the same thing you know as you see and i mentioned that this is a five minute open range breakup even though it's happening half an hour after that but again, you know, just another one that you can just easily take the trade. You do, the key point here is you have to wait for claiming the VWAP. You do not want to go long on the stock, which is below the VWAP. And that's the most important thing on that. Yeah, so you can call these ABCD pattern or five minute opening range breakup or both. I mean, these names are essentially the manifestation of a battle between buyers and sellers. And that's very important. You do not want to um you know get a stock into the names you know every strategy gives you um, um you know understanding of balance of power between buyers and sellers and that's that's what you really want to uh want to know so iwm is really running up maybe it's worth to get some maybe i get a little bit of out of my iwm position here um how many shares i have maybe i just get out to 200 you know it's just IWM is really extended. Maybe it's worth to just get out a little bit on that. And later when it drops, maybe I can actually buy back on it. 
to, to get a better average. So I'm actually selling a little bit of my IWM here. And actually, let's sell a little bit more. Because now it's really, really extended from the VWAP. When it pulls back to the VWAP, I'm actually buying back that 600 shares that I already have. Well, it's really extended right now. But I think the fact that I claim the VWAP is just going to go up much higher. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much for uh, coming and watching. Uh, if you like this video, please like it because Tiffany's uh, recaps are getting a lot of attention uh, because she's an amazing trader and she explains really well. But please show me some love. I appreciate that. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much it for me. Zoom is now pulling back. I mean, the market is just amazing, guys. The market has been amazing. Uh, I mean, this is the time of the year, usually end of August, early September, that traditionally people think that the market is not volatile because people are at the beat. No, uh, people are at the beach, not at the beat. But apparently, no, it's just uh, this volatility is just getting better and better and better. Um, there's so many reasons for that. It's just because, you know, the COVID and volatility with that. And plus, there's so much money is in liquid that just pumping into different sector to the sector. I mean, this Tesla, Neo, this electronic thing is going to die. I, believe, I, I promise you, this is going to die soon. And then this money and this volatility goes to another sector. I mean, it was, used to be travel sector and then vaccine sector and then now electronic vehicle. And then after that, it goes to the tech. And then after tech goes to blockchain companies. This volatility, this pocket of money, it will go. Part of it is us, part of it is Robin Hood traders, part of it is Wall Street. There's so much family offices and institutions that they, they make profit out of that as well. So, you know, it's just, uh, I don't think this trading, day trading, active trading is going anywhere. Uh, I think just getting much better and better and better. So, so much money is slushing around as just Brian mentioned that. And uh, yeah, so that's, uh, that's one thing. All right, guys, so um, thank you so much. This Hams is creating a lot of memes. What is that? What's that did mean? Uh, <laughs> Chief meme officer, yeah. So he's just creating meme for us all day long. So uh, thank you so much, Hamza, for that. I was just going to post some of it into our social media. It's really nice. Uh, yeah, so that's it for me. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hold into this IWM position uh, because, uh, you know, it's just... Uh, yeah, it's just this drop is probably going to go back to around 155.50. I'm going to add a couple of thousand shares more on it. And I'm just going back uh, up and down. And another thing that I wanted to mention that, guys, there's so much, uh, you know, scammers are out there. So actually, this is the one. So much scammers. If anyone is uh, reaching out to you guys, always read this uh, Twitter handle. You know, there's always, they find the people who have some followers. I don't have any much followers, but... You know, they add, you know, the bear bull that has one L on it. So, and what they do is, and it's very funny, guys. What they do is they ask for money to trade for you and share the profit. And they usually ask for money with cryptocurrency because then you can't just track them and get them, you get your money back. If you use PayPal, credit card stuff, you can, you, there's always a way to get that. But, uh, so yeah, don't, don't pay, just report them. Uh, I appreciate you uh, messaging me. And it's not only me. Every person in the financial industry, there's always there's some you know, impersonation from them. Uh, yeah, they do it on Instagram a lot, uh, a lot, and they do it on uh, Twitter as well. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much for, uh, for uh, trading with us. And oh, that's another thing that I was going to say. Members trade of the recap, uh, members trade of the week. The, the, we're going to pump up the price to an iPhone, the newest iPhone that we have. Now we have 11 Pro is the newest and then the next one that they announced maybe next month and then we'll with that. But for that, you're going to create a replay for us plus a nice screenshot. And the screenshot should be nice, guys. As I mentioned, don't, don't, this shouldn't be your screenshot. And you know, that, don't, don't give us this screenshot and then there's two arrows and we don't understand anything. You know, screenshot, you have only five seconds to capture you know, that's, that's a rule in, uh, guys, that's a really rule in, um, you know, presentations. We have five seconds, just five seconds to, to make your point and give it to, um, um, to your audience. Uh, so nice, very nice screenshot plus a replay. And then also a short uh, summary of your trade book. Why did you make that trade? And then that's uh, going to be, uh, that's going to be a trade that uh, you want. Yeah, I think I think actually my internet I think did so 
I'm gonna, yeah, I think I lost the internet. But anyways, thank you so much. I finished this recording and talk to you soon, guys.